Hello internet and welcome back to another video hosted on youtube.com underneath the EJ Black subdomain. Today I'm going to be making a video about an Australian comedian called Isaac Butterfield. Um, I disagree with a lot of his points on a range of topics, but this video is specifically about his transphobic rhetoric. Now I want to say a few things before I start. First of all, Noah Samson just made a video about him and Mr. Beard also did. I had this idea before they made the videos, however, they both covered different topics to me, so I feel like I should still make this video. The second thing I want to say is that while I think that Isaac Butterfield is incorrect about a lot of the things he talks about, I don't necessarily think that he's a bad person by any means, and I don't think that it means that he should be cancelled in any way, which seems to be his biggest fear, just looking at his channel, that he's saying what the left don't want you to hear, and so the left is going to cancel him. I think that he's a nice enough person. He is not like a Ben Shapiro type where he won't use your requested pronouns if you ask him. He looks like he's willing to at least talk to people in different sides of the argument to him. And I also think he's pretty left-leaning. He's friends with someone called Friendly Geordies, who is a pretty left-leaning person. And Friendly Geordies is someone I really enjoy the content of. So... I think that at least if Friendly Geordie sees something in him, he can't be all bad, you know? Um, but in all seriousness, I think that Isaac Butterfield is someone who's willing to listen and someone who's willing to have a discussion about these topics, which is why I felt like I wanted to talk about him specifically. I also think it's important to mention that I'm not talking about Isaac Butterfield because I don't like Isaac Butterfield. It's more because it's emblematic of what I see in other communities that use the same sort of talking points as him. And so you can kind of think of this as a video talking about all of this transphobic rhetoric instead of just Isaac Butterfield himself. And the final thing I want to say, which I kind of already touched on, is that I really do think that Isaac Butterfield isn't necessarily a transphobic person. I just think that his rhetoric is incorrect and promotes transphobic ideas, whether he realizes it or not. Which is why I feel like it's important to discuss his video specifically, because he's someone who seems like he could actually change his mind, because he doesn't have that massive stigma against transgender people. So the first video I wanted to watch is called Define a Woman. Define a Woman. Okay. This conversation had petrol poured on it the other day when a Supreme Court nominee in America was asked this very simple question. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. So the first thing I want to say is it is a little bit strange that she didn't have an answer to this question. But the way I would answer is someone who just identifies as a woman. I think that's an, enough in most cases. But I know that a lot of people who focus on biology would disagree with me, even though I think that biology is a good indication of transgender people. Um, a lot of people will point to, well, XX and XY chromosomes are what make your gender. I would disagree with this, um, but I want to hear it from the horse's mouth, you know, so we'll see what he says. Point being, there are many ways to define what a woman is, and this Supreme Court nominee can't give one. So why is that? Is she actually not able to, or is she just terrified? of the repercussions that would happen if she dare go against the mainstream narrative of there is no such thing as men and women. She is that terrified of saying someone with an XX chromosome that she just flat out refuses to answer the question and looks like an idiot. So I think that it's interesting that he says the reason she's not saying it is because she's scared that she's, she's walking on eggshells basically. And I don't necessarily think that's true. It might be hard for some people to define what they think a woman is because their ideas of what a woman is is changing. Nothing is ever set in stone and everyone will always be changing their opinions and changing how they see the world. And so you might have just caught her in a transitional period, pun intended, where she doesn't necessarily know how she would define this. But that doesn't mean that she doesn't understand the concept, you know? Thankfully we have heroes in America like Tucker Carlson who gave us this amazing explanation of what a woman is. It's usually pretty obvious that women just by looking at them. Women are built differently because their bodies are designed to do different things. Nature is real. I don't think you should ever use Tucker Carlson as your example for anything. Tucker Carlson is not smart. He has no idea what he's talking about ever. He's the last person you want to take any advice from. Biology determines what you are. And I'm more than happy, as most people are, to 
say, hey, if you identify as something else, I'll call you that something else. Marvelous, good on you, congratulations. I wish you the best in life. So he says that no matter what, he'll call you by your preferred pronouns, which I think is at least a good step. And I think that it shows that he doesn't necessarily have malintention. It just means that he doesn't necessarily understand. But if you want to be scientific, XX chromosomes mean you are a woman. Okay, but that's a bit of a video that I have a problem with. I do not think that XX chromosomes necessarily make you a woman by gender. It might make you a woman by sex. And I would recommend watching a video called Sex and Sensibility, which I will link in the description. But I think that it's important to take into account that there are so many in-between states and so much that we don't understand about different people in different circumstances that you can't give a one-size-fits-all. What if you're someone who was born with XY chromosomes but you only produce estrogen, which is a thing that can happen? What happens if you have XXY chromosomes or XYY chromosomes or something like that? What happens if you've got a circumstance where you don't know someone's chromosome? Because most people don't even get testing done on their DNA. You might never know. You might be born with a penis and produce testosterone, but you might actually have X sex chromosomes the whole time and there was just some mutation that led your chromosomes to not align with your hormones. So there's really thousands of explanations for different circumstances that could mean that you're not necessarily going to identify as the same gender as your chromosomes. There's also differences in people's brain um, that would make them want to maybe transition later in life. And that doesn't necessarily fall into the same category as these um, chromosome disputes. But there is legitimate reason to say that this person is this gender. And that's why I think the video that I'm gonna link is a very important watch because I don't understand biology much at all, but I think that it's important for people like Isaac to see. So your question may be, why does any of this matter? And that's a fair question. To those people I say this, women are people too. I know that may scare you, but women are people too, with their own history and achievements of things that women have done. And when you erase the concept of a woman, all of that goes out the window as well. Now he says here that there's a concept of a woman that you might erase if you change the definition. But I don't necessarily think that's fair. It's not like men go around saying, we discovered gravity, it was men. And we discovered the theory of relativity, men did that. And the first iPhone was built by a man, therefore these are men achievements. They're not man achievements, they're the individual's achievements. It was Isaac Newton who discovered gravity. It wasn't all of men. And so when you say women are a people too with their own achievements, well, I don't think that it's fair to say that every woman should have these achievements listed under their gender because it doesn't really make much sense. It was, it's the individual people or the movement who did a certain thing. And so to say that, well, you're erasing their history by doing this, I don't think that's fair. And that's the same for men. Is men can beat women in women's sports against women. Now, a lot of people don't really care about this subject unless it's uh, boxing or MMA where the person's actually getting hurt. But it's also an issue in sports where there is no physical contact, like swimming. People work so hard to get to where they are to be successful at swimming, then all of a sudden, someone who was a man 12 months ago and was a shit swimmer is now the best swimmer out of all the women because they have transitioned. This is something that also I see a lot of. Hassan has a very good video about this. I know a lot of people don't like Hassan Paika or Hassan Abi, but I think that he makes a very good point about this, which is that's kind of not true. A lot of the people who transition to other genders don't necessarily go into sports. And even if they do go into sports, why does it really matter? I mean, the people who are the best at sports have a genetic advantage all the time, every single time, a gold medal is won, this person has a genetic advantage. How do I know this? Because different people train different amounts, right? Once you're at that upper point where everyone's training 12 hours a day, then what's the only factor that can make it different? It has to be genetics. It can't be the training because they're all doing the same training. So the only other factor is genetics. And so when it, when it comes to someone who's transitioned to a different gender and enters sport, I think it's really dumb to say, oh, well, they have the genetic advantage. No one's changing genders because they want to enter sports. That's just a dumb thing to assume. And so these people are changing genders because they have gender dysphoria, but they also want to enter sport. And I think that's fair enough. So it's not really people in the sports who are actually caring about it. It's more people outside the sports who are pushing this narrative. So yes, it sucks for Leah, but should we be worrying about one person here? Or should we worry about all of the other swimmers? I think we should be worrying about everybody. And I think you can worry about everybody in, without having to single out trans women or trans men. I think that's just unfairly pointing people out. For Leah herself, in the men's division, when she was swimming as a man, she was ranked as lowest as 500th. 
And now in the women's, she's ranked as highest as first. Do we see the difference? I've also heard this before, and that's completely untrue. She was ranked 500th years ago. And when she competed on the male team, she was actually doing pretty well. Um, like, even compared to the men. So, which kind of disproves your point. I mean, if you had Michael Phelps, who's an amazing swimmer, and he transitioned to female, he would still be doing just as well. He would still be coming first, or at least when he was in his prime. I don't know what he's doing now. But my point stands that if you're really good when you're in the male sports and you transition, you're going to be really good at female sports, and it's got nothing to do with you transitioning. And you can look up her recent statistics to find out what she was doing in the male teams before she swapped. And all of this stems from refusing to define a woman. Disembodied Elijah Voice here. Just wanted to add that what he's doing here is called catastrophizing. It's when you take this little thing and you say that this is a whole reason that all these other things are happening. I do not agree that all of this stems from not being able to define a woman, and I don't really think he does on an internal level. We are terrifyingly close to a genderless society, a society that polices language and polices thought. What's wrong with a genderless society? Policing thought is one thing, and I think that free speech is really important. I think that even if you are being harmful in what you say, which I don't think necessarily Isaac is doing, I think if you are being harmful in what you say, like Ben Shapiro or Tucker Carlson, for example, I think that it's important that you say it because it's important that people talk about it, you know? And if people have these thoughts within them that they can't express and so can't fight back against, how are you going to convince people? And that's why I think it's important for people to say this so people can come back at it. You know, YouTubers like Sean, H Bomber Guy, who I think are incredible YouTubers who will talk about this kind of stuff, even though they don't just they don't agree with the opinions, it's important that these people are saying it because we need to talk about it and have proper discussions. And so I don't think this is an argument against free speech. I think this is an argument against specific points that people are making. And I don't think that you should cancel someone just because they have different opinions to you. I think it's important to discuss these opinions, which is why I don't think that the cancelling narrative is really fair. I think that I should have this discussion with Isaac instead of some kind of coordinated Twitter attack, you know? Um, I also think it's important to mention that a lot of people say, oh, this is just year eight biology. XX is woman and XY is man. And that's just your what you learned in year eight biology. And that's what you have to know. But science goes beyond year eight biology. You don't know everything when you finish high school. And they intentionally give you simplified accounts in high school so you can build this foundation as you go up. So it's hard for you to argue with someone who's like actually studied biology about this. And studies show more interestingly that trans people are actually valid in their gender identities because, well, it, there's a linguistic argument to make and a biological argument to make. And I think that the biological argument looks pretty sound because what is someone who is a certain gender? If you think that it correlates to their sex, then you've just got so many outliers to take into account that it doesn't really make sense to a certain point. Okay, now we're going to be looking at a video called Disney Let Kids Be Kids, which I think perpetuates a similar narrative. Disney has gone so woke that the corporate president has come out and announced that she wants a minimum, a minimum of 50% of the characters in Disney films and shows and wherever to be LGBTQIA+, or racial minorities, 50%. Now, I understand that your race being shown to you as a child in TV and cartoons and stuff, I guess that's important. Representation is important. But when it comes to your sexual preference, why is that important to show to children? Now, this is another problem that I see really common. I don't think that Isaac understands how early sexual preference will manifest. People who are gay tend to have feelings of like same gender attraction when they're really, really young. And it's not necessarily sexual. You know, I know that we use the word sexuality and sexual preference, but it can, we can also use the terms gender preference if that would help you. And we can have two men being married without showing any sex, you know? Like when Arthur did it, Arthur had two men getting married. There was no sex involved because the whole point was that two men are getting married, not that two men are fucking each other, you know? I'm here as a mother of, of two queer children, actually. Um, uh, one transgender child. Um, um, and one pansexual child. So she's got a trans child and a pansexual child. I don't know how old these children are, but I assume they have to be at least over the age of 12. I fucking hope. Otherwise, this lady is, uh, yeah, not a great human. 
this woman is not a great human if her children are under 12 and experiencing gender dysphoria so you let them transition. People who say this don't really understand what transitioning means when you're under 12 years old. It does not mean you're getting your dick chopped off. It does not mean you're getting pumped full of silicone to have breasts, okay? It just means that you'll either be on hormone blockers, which means you might have puberty a little later, because you might want to wait until you can fully have puberty, especially if you're under 12, because people under 12 don't often have puberty. Some people do, so that's why you have the hormone blockers, to push it back a little later, so you can have more time to decide and think about it. Hello, hello there, internet. It's Editing Elijah here. Just wanted to add that this would also invalidate Isaac's earlier argument when he says that Leah Thomas shouldn't be participating in sport because she has extra muscle mass or whatever. If someone transitions earlier, they won't have all those years with testosterone, so they should be able to participate in sports even by Isaac's own logic. Okay, back to the video. And the second thing that happens is you dress differently. Dressing differently has nothing to do with gender, all right? It's just how people like to express their gender, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you are a different gender. And so I think it's important to mention that when Isaac says this, he doesn't necessarily understand what transitioning means. And the pansexual argument, again, you don't have to think about it as sexualization. You know how a six-year-old might say, oh, wow, she's pretty, you know? That's, it's kind of similar to that. I might, as a four-year-old, think, oh, wow, that man is hot. And you're, you're allowed to do that, you know? You, people have crushes when they're in year two. It doesn't necessarily mean you're sexualizing the person. It just means you're attracted to this person. Now, labels can be a bit annoying, right? Calling someone pansexual can be weird. Calling them panromantic can also be a little bit weird if you do it at this age. But to say that someone feels attraction to someone else at a certain age, I don't think that's a problem, really. And you might think, oh, but if they transition now, then they can't detransition later. That is one of the dumbest arguments ever. If you transitioned once, why the hell can't you transition again back to the gender you already were? So the fact that trans people exist immediately disproves the idea that you're stuck as a certain gender. And so I think that it's really dumb that he says, I hope these children are over 12. I just think it's that people of any age can experience whatever thoughts they are. And you don't have to push them to the extreme, but just to say, you know what, that's all right. Maybe we won't necessarily push this now, but to at least engage with this idea, maybe see a psychologist to see, to see how you feel about this and how you're feeling in general, I think it's really important. As for the pansexual part, if you don't know what pansexual is, it means you're attracted to all genders, which means you're attracted to men and women, which means you're bisexual, but they made up a new word. Wake up to yourselves. Isaac Butterfield. There are people who even not taking into account transgenders are non-binary. This means that they experience aspects of both genders. Okay, even if you don't think trans identity is real, which it is, but even if you don't think it is real, non-binary people exist biologically. I think that's one of the dumbest things he said, to be honest. And I don't necessarily think he has malintent still. I just think he doesn't understand, unfortunately. That's great. Have gay characters, have pan characters, have fucking bi characters, lesbian characters, straight characters, not so straight characters, rooting around on their missus with the bloke down at the park characters. But why does their sexuality matter? In what part of a Disney film does what someone happened to enjoy in the bedroom have to do with anything within that program? Sexuality doesn't only come into play in the bedroom. You know it, I know it. If you had a partner in real life, you would go to the store together maybe. I don't know, I don't know what couples do, but there's more to it than just what you do in the bedroom. Um, and so I think what she's saying is we need to see characters with two dads, for example. It doesn't necessarily mean we need to see them having sex. It barely has anything to do with sex, right? It's about attraction in general. When it comes to children, let kids be kids. Fuck ya. Again, this has nothing to do with letting kids be kids or letting kids not be kids, all right? It's just showing them that other people exist and people can feel different things to them or feel the same things as them. We don't know how they feel. And so we're not pushing any ideology by showing different people. That's not pushing anything. And if you think this is genuinely from Disney's point of view about trans issues, you're a fucking idiot. The reason they're doing this is money. I think Isaac Butterfield just discovered capitalism. Yes, we know that Disney might be doing it just for money, right? Who cares? Who cares if they're doing this just for money? Because it's not about that. You wouldn't be fighting against it if it was just for money, but something you agreed with. 
the, you're, the reason you're fighting against this is because it's an ideology that you disagree with. So we're going to take out the money argument because that has nothing to do with this. Every company wants money. Every company will say whatever they need to to make money. It doesn't take anything away from the argument itself. It just takes away from the people making the argument, in this case, Disney. The end of this video is really just making jokes about the Disney characters. I don't mind that. You can do whatever you want. But the point that I'm trying to make is that I don't think Isaac necessarily understands these issues as much as he thinks he does. And look, maybe I don't understand them as much as I think I do too. We all could learn more, you know? But I think it's important to engage with people in different sides of the argument, and I don't think he does enough. And I think that's where I'm going to leave this video. Sorry that my hair's so messy, but um, I was walking in the rain today, so you know how it is. If you want to keep watching Isaac, of course keep watching him. If you don't want to keep watching him, don't keep watching him, right? I don't want to cancel him in any way. And I don't want people to stop watching him. I used to actually enjoy his content a lot in around 2017, 2018. I'm not a massive fan of it anymore because it seems to revolve around the same few issues now, which is kind of, you know, a little bit boring for me. But that might just be because it was novel at the time and it's not novel anymore. It doesn't make him a bad content creator. It doesn't necessarily make him a bad person. I just think it's important to talk about these issues and to understand them from a different point of view. Um, if you want to watch Noah Sampson's video about it, I think it's a good watch. He goes in a little bit harder than me, but I think it's because Noah Sampson has only seen this specific side of Isaac. And I think the important thing to take into account is that no one is a particular caricature that you might make of them, right? He has different opinions, and I think that's perfectly fine, and I think it's important to talk about it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then you, then you can like the video. That's one of the buttons on this website. You can actually click it and then it will show YouTube. It'll say basically, I enjoyed this piece of media. And then more people might see this video um, because not a lot of people are probably gonna see it because I'm a small channel and I'm also bad, ba bad at everything.